Welcome back everybody. It is currently mid-July, which means it is winter here in Australia, which basically means that it is just constantly rainy and cold in Sydney. But there are actually some places in Australia that do experience snowfall, contrary to popular belief. And these are places like southern New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania, which is literally a day trip away from the Antarctic. Like you can leave at 7am and come back at 9pm. So because it's winter and Zoe and I like to fantasize about living in a place where it doesn't just rain on and off for three months. We're focusing on winter species. <coughs> Zoe's last video um, explored the Japanese maple tree, which is a plant that is native to East Asia. But today I'm going to be looking at an animal that is native to Central Asia, which is the snow leopard. The snow leopard is also known as the ounce and it is a big cat. This is a classification that refers to the five animals that are part of the panthera genus, which are the tigers, lions, jaguars, leopards, and snow leopards. Fun fact. It sounds like snow leopards and leopards would be the closest related because they do have the same name. But actually, interestingly enough, um, snow leopards are the closest genetically to tigers. Wow. They're the only big cats that live in cold Asian deserts and interestingly enough, the snow leopard is the only big cat that is unable to roar. So because of that, they, in the physiology of their throat, they um, actually make a non-aggressive puffing sound called a chuff. So it's basically done by just blowing air through their nose. If you're wondering why they're called the ounce, which I'm sure a few of you are, um, it's actually because the scientific name for the snow leopard is the Panthera uncia, and uncia comes from the old French word ounce, so sometimes it is still referred to as the ounce. Physical appearance. The snow leopard ranges from 55 to 65 centimeters tall and 90 to 115 centimeters long, which is from the head to the base of the tail, and the tail itself is about 100 centimeters long as well. Snow leopards are incredibly adapted to their environment because it has extra large paws that act as natural snowshoes that stop it from sinking into the snow, and it has round, short ears that reduce heat loss and a wide, short nasal cavity that uh, warms the air before it reaches the lungs. Another adaptation that helps them to survive in the cold, like such cold, harsh climates is the fur on their stomachs, which is nearly 13 centimeters thick and acts as a form of insulation. So because of their strong, short front limbs and their longer hind limbs, they can launch themselves nearly 10 meters in the air in a single leap. Not high, like across. That would be terrifying. <laughs> And their fur provides um, incredible camouflage because of its colours and patterns and so it has this grey white base with these dark spots and rosettes. As we've established the snow leopard also has an incredibly long tail which is about the length of the body itself and this helps to maintain balance and retain heat which is incredibly important in cold environments. The ability to maintain balance is incredibly important for these cats because they've been recorded living at some of the highest altitudes of any big cats. A Worldwide Fund for Nature, or WWF study, found that they can live up to 5,859 metres above sea level, which according to WWF is uh, about the same height as Canada's highest mountain, which is known as Mount Logan. Behaviour. Snow leopards are known to be pretty solitary animals. They spend most of their lives in solitude and are often referred to as shy or elusive. Um, for about 18 months, the mother snow leopard raises the cubs on her own, and then once the cubs are about two years old, they begin to disperse from the mother and set out on their own, like independent little kittens. Despite being solitary creatures, they do actually have methods of communication. This usually consists of leaving markings on the landscape for other cats to find or for scraping the ground and spraying urine against rocks to mark the territory or to find a mate. aggressive towards humans this means that there's never actually been a verified snow leopard attack against humans um, and if it's disturbed while feeding it's actually more likely to flee instead of attempt to defend the site and they're actually most active at dawn and dusk which is known as a crepuscular activity pattern as opposed to nocturnal or diurnal mating season for snow leopards is around January to mid-march and during this time a male and a female snow leopard will travel together for a few days and then 
The gestation period is typically 93 to 110 days and then the mother will relocate to a sheltered den site before giving birth in about June or July. As I said before, the mother raises the cubs alone and provides food and shelter for them until they go their separate ways. Life cycle. Cubs uh, actually don't open their eyes until they're about seven days old. They're unable to eat solid food until about two months old. At three months old, snow leopard cubs begin to follow their mother and they learn really important life skills like hunting. At around 18 or 22 months old, the cubs become independent of their mothers. According to the Snow Leopard Trust, based on limited data available from the wild, it appears that female snow leopards are ready to have their own cubs by age three. At age four, male snow leopards become sexually mature. And life expectancy is very different in captivity versus in the wild. Um, so in captivity life expectancy, um, snow leopards have been known to live up to 22 years, but in the wild conditions are much harsher. Um, and so life expectancy is much lower, typically at about 10 to 12 years. Diet. Snow leopards are carnivores, but the diet varies depending on location. However, most commonly they'll hunt wild sheep and goats. And there are three key prey species for the snow leopard. The blue sheep, which is the burral. The Asiatic Ibex, a large wild goat, and the Agali, a wild sheep species. The most important factor in determining the sustainability of an area for snow leopards is the availability of wild prey. Snow leopards eat very slowly, typically taking about three or four days to consume the prey. And throughout this period, they'll remain near the kill site to protect the prey from animals such as vultures or ravens. But as I said, if a human were to interrupt this process, it would be much, much, much more likely to flee the scene Clear the scene instead of attempt to stay and defend it. Um, so the snow leopard will eat every few hours until the carcass is bare and on average they hunt a large animal every eight to ten days. Apparently there are very slight differences between the dietary patterns of males and females. Females killed 94 wild ibex and males killed 69. Females killed six wild agali where males killed four. Females killed zero domestic horses and males killed 11. Females killed three domestic camels, males killed four. Females killed 18 domestic goat and sheep, whereas males killed 30. Habitat. Snow leopards are found in mountain ranges across Central Asia with their habitat range covering about two million kilometers squared, which is approximately the size of Greenland or Mexico. I'm gonna Google how to say that. through 12 countries, Afghanistan, Bhutan, China, India, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Nepal, Pakistan, Russia, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. Despite this huge habitat range, the Snow Leopard Trust states that there are actually between 3,920 and 6,390 snow leopards left in the wild. Because the global population is less than 10,000 mature individuals and is expected to decline by about 10% by 2040, uh, snow leopards are classified as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List. The greatest threat to snow leopards are poaching and habitat destruction. They often fall prey to what's known as retaliatory killings, where farmers might kill snow leopards because they would prey on livestock. The snow leopard's natural prey is also hunted by local communities, and so as it becomes harder to find, the snow leopards are forced to turn to killing livestock in order to survive. Human settlement and increased use of grazing space also proves to be a huge factor in the rapid decrease of snow leopard population. China is one of the most influential countries in conservation efforts because it's where as much as 60% of snow leopard habitat areas can be found. WWF monitors in attempts to eliminate the illegal trade of snow leopard fur, bones and other body parts. And they're also attempting to reduce retaliatory killings of snow leopards through innovative local insurance plans and they work with goat herders in Mongolia to build awareness about the plight of the snow leopard and reduce the killing of snow leopards as retaliation for killing livestock. So I hope you all enjoy learning about the snow leopard. In my opinion it's one of the coolest animals. Hopefully we'll be back with a video soon. Um, I'm really sorry this video is late because I did have to refilm it several times.
so my apologies but as always nurture nature